So hello everybody. Uh, so today, like, we're going to talk about uh, uh, neuronal, neuronal and chemical uh, regulations of uh, respirations. Uh, uh, so, so uh, let's do this. I know there, uh, we have to talk about a lot of different things, uh, but as we go, we'll try to explain as much as uh, we can and see uh, whether we can uh, we can actually have a good understanding of this. Okay, so. What about we talk about respirations? Uh, New York, uh, there are two types of respirations that we're going to discuss about. That is going to be your neuronal and also the chemical respirations of, uh, and how, uh, and what is the, what is the functions of this? The, the main functions of it is that somehow, like your respiratory centers have to adjust the rate of your ventilations, uh, to the demands of your, uh, demands of your body uh, so uh, so the way they maintain is with a different process uh, uh, one of the most important thing is that your uh, the chemical composition especially the possible carbon dioxide uh, possible oxygen and ph that needs to be maintained so that way your respirations can be controlled okay so uh, whenever we talk about the uh, neural respirations, we have to start from like your uh, your brain stems because what happens is that your your respiratory centers that are located in your pons and uh, pons and medulla. Okay, so if I just quickly make uh, this uh, brain stem right here, uh, so I'm just gonna quickly draw uh, the brain stem. Let's just make this as uh, uh, one one way of you know. And let's just make this as, and then this is going to be like, so this is about a cross sections of it, more like a sagittal view. And we can refer, refer this as your midbrain right here, okay? So we'll call this as a midbrain right here. And then this one is going to be your pons, all right? And then this is going to be a medulla, and this is going to be a spinal cord right here, okay? So uh, the, group of, the group of specialized nuclei, they're actually present. Uh, in, this is my medulla right here, and there are some of this, for the specific the respiratory center, uh, some of the nuclei that are actually present here, there lies within the solitary tract of nuclei. If you remember, uh, like for example, like right here, there are going to be your pyramids, okay, the two pyramids right here, okay, and then what is going to happen is that there are going to be your olive right here, okay, there's going to be a olive right here, okay, and then Really, what happens is that right next to you, on the right, uh, there's going to be a your fourth ventricle right here, okay? Like basically fourth ventricle, and your uh, this uh, solitary tract of nucleus is going to be present like within this area, okay? And then right next to or adjacent to that, there's going to be a group of nuclei. So I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to, I'm going to erase this. I just wanted to write that down to just show you where it's located, but it's like around here. So erase this part, and I'll just gonna. Just show that nuclei, which is like right here, and I'm gonna refer. Uh, I'm gonna make this just like a this nuclei, okay? And this is what you call as as and it's bilaterally located. It's even located right here, okay? I mean, this is a sagittal view, but like uh, it's bilaterally located. So let me just not write down another one. But this is called your dorsal respiratory group of nuclei, okay? And one of the main functions of this, they have the automaticity. They can actually, uh, they're like the pacemakers of your respiratory centers, uh, pacemaker for your respirations. That's what they're called. Uh, they are, but this can be modulated by different things. And as we go, we'll talk about it. But they are bilaterally located here, right? And then, okay, let me, and then also other thing is that right here, these dorsal respiratory groups, okay, Okay, let me not draw this down right here. And then there's also there's some other nuclei that are present like more in down here. Okay, and we'll talk about that. Actually, let me not name that yet. But this one of the one of the role of dorsal respiratory nuclei. What do they do is like like you know they can uh, they can have like a descending fibers like here. Okay, they go like descending fibers as this go downwards. Where do they go is like they go to like spinal cord right here. So let's just make this spinal cord, and especially at the level of like uh, C3, C4, and C5, 6. So if I make my okay, let's just quickly make this. Uh, if I make a cross sections of this and make a spinal cord right here, okay. So let's just make this spinal cord right here. If I make this one, okay, you're gonna have. Okay, the cross sections of spinal cord right here. 
all right get lower motor neurons for this one okay it's present down here okay this is going to be a, a lower motor neurons present down here so let's make this right so this one goes down here okay right here and then from there what happens is that at the level of i said level of c3 c4 and then c5 okay so and then still leave this and then going to go the po the post fibers goes and then it's going to go where it's going to go where, and we have to talk about this obviously uh let me draw this with the different colors okay so basically it's going to go down here okay let me let me draw this and this is what it is there's a larynx I'm drawing right here. Okay, the, build the larynx. Let me just quickly make this. What is this? This is going to be crico. What is this? Cricoid, right? Cricoid cartilage is going to be. This is a larynx, cricothyroid. And then this is, there is going to be ligaments down here. And this is oh, bound by this ligament. What is the name of the ligament? It's called. It's called cricothyroid ligaments, all right? This is the cricothyroid ligaments, is this one. And then, obviously, I have to make this clear right here. This is also bound by. Uh, and then you're gonna have beautifully drawing. You're gonna have a, a trach here, right here, okay? And then from the trach, this is gonna be a trach here, right here. And you're gonna have a this is a bronchi right here. It's gonna make a make a bronchi, okay? So I make a bronchi. Then it's going to give up all these fibers, right? And then like that. Same thing with this one. This is going to be... Okay, let's, let's just make this one. Alrighty, right? And then uh, it's going to give a lot of fibers, but for our case, like I'm just going to make one alveoli right here like this, okay? Same thing with this one. Alright, now quickly draw this and then what is surrounded by this one is going to make this beautiful mine gonna be like this okay and then same thing with this one too all right and let's just make this a little smaller right here okay and then we have to make this little beautifully okay and then Okay, this is also going to go, and then you are going to have a You have to draw this too. Same thing with this one too. Alright. And then, obviously, sorry for the drawing, but you're going to have a Okay, so Just drawing one thing at a time, and then pink colors. We can even make more down here. Okay like that all right now so then obviously i'm gonna have what i'm gonna have this cage which is gonna i'm gonna have a uh, make a uh with the red i'm gonna make this as a uh my the cross sections of my thoracic i just make uh and then have a collateral sequence right here all right and this is my cross sections of my what is this called this is called all right thoracic okay and this is bound to the portal now so whenever this guy comes right here okay the lower motor neurons what is going to come and then we'll make a cross sections of my thoracic right here so this is going to do and i have to draw like also and down here what do we have I'm just going to draw quickly but we'll just make with this pink color we'll make a like this is a let's just make a like diaphragm muscles right here okay same thing with there too so, so we'll make a one for now so what is going to happen here is with this case is really what happens is that this phrenic nerve is going to go and the inner of it the center tendons of diaphragm right that's going to again again have fibers like this so that's what he's going to do so whenever the diaphragm contracts like if i make it a diagram right here what is going to happen is that if this is my diaphragm like this right whenever it contracts it goes one centimeter down so that way it becomes something like this so whenever it pulls the thoracic cage right it puts the thoracic cage with that the visceral layer is attached with my lungs is going to come out too okay because your elastic property uh Elastic recoil for the lungs will go outward, okay, and then the air will come in, right? That's what will take the air in. That's called quiet respiration, in a quiet respiration, okay? That's how we, we take the breath in. So I just wanted to show that how this uh, 
this uh, this those respiratory groups can sense the fibers and then it helps with the quiet respirations okay so with the c3 c4 c5 6 but then at the same time that this phrenic nerves also this those respiratory groups also have some fibers going to like your other uh, other fibers which is going to be like let's just make the here the other other one and that gives fibers to uh this muscle right here okay and those are going to be let's make this as okay you have a if you want to take like deep deep inspirations like i was like because this is for the quiet breathing where your diaphragm is contract right but when you're doing a like long breathing i have to use like other muscles other muscles and these dorsal respiratory groups can also have a supplies to these other muscles uh and especially for the for the nerves so that we, we call them external intercostal intercostal nerve that actually goes and supplies uh this the this extra intercostal muscles okay and then what it does is it helps with it helps with like uh, uh with like the buckle you know it, it contracts this extra intercostal muscles so what happens is that uh, uh, the 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 diameter thoracic diameter will go it will increase up okay based on if you know the buckle handle moments so because of that it will it will it will allow us to take more air in and they do have that supplies there too okay so this is going to be my for the deep inspirations okay now these dorsal group dorsal dorsal group as i said as i said that they are they are heavily influenced by something so whenever we take the air in the the, the way the dorsal respiratory group works is okay they say some uh, now the way they say is that this this dorsal respiratory group has like those you know like they have the rhythmic properties meaning like uh they are also called uh their rhythmic center and usually what happens is that you know we beats like about respiratory uh rate is about like 12 to 16 beats per minute right and then what is that how we get that is that that this whenever this dorsal respiratory group uh like uh, gives an excellent potentials it will able to fire for about like uh like two seconds and if we want to look at it diagrammatically the way it does work is like let's just make this as okay here it makes like something like okay here, let's just join a little a little bigger so what happens is that the way this those respiratory group fires is like if i make it like this it will fire more like this okay it'll fire more you know like this so usually it fires for like a so this is going to be my time right here and this is going to be like my uh excellent potentials of the dorsal respiratory group okay or the phrenic nerve so basically in the normal quiet breathing so these fires so look if you look at this this has like a ramp like this see and then the same thing one two three. so it goes like like this so that we need to fire it fires for two seconds and there's a stop for this one for like a three seconds okay and then it again it started firing for another two seconds and the way it fires it it fires more in a ramp fashion so that's what they call as a this they call this as a inspiratory inspiratory ramp signal okay and the way it works is to move first it fires a little bit okay and there's one this stimulate this one you go a little up and maybe one two stimulates the third one third is stimulate the fourth and fourth is the five one so maybe like maybe this one is the highest stimulated okay and then this fires for uh, uh about two seconds and this is where you take the all the air in but then after that what happens like down here some of this inspiratory center the dorsal respiratory stops okay and no longer respirations and then any and then what happens uh, and there's a pause or like or, or uh for three seconds of left and what is happening there any muscle is contracting that time or is it a passive process remember this is an expiration process so in expiration there is no any sort of like any muscle is not contracting it's just, what is happening here is that it, the 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 lungs that got recoil outward during the inspirations what happens here they are just going to recoil inward and exhale the air out so your expiration expiration during the quiet breathing is going to be what it's a it's a passive process there's no any sort of like a, a inter uh, uh, contractions are happening during that process and that usually happens for a, about a three seconds but you have to remember that how do you know that how does the dorsal respiratory groups actually know that when to stop 
how would you know that it only it should only apply for two seconds and after you should start for three seconds how do you know for that one you have to know that there is a switch off center okay and these switch off centers are located in the upper pawns okay and these switch are located right down here i'm gonna write down has this one the red guy right here okay so this one okay there's a this guy so this this pal knows to switch okay and what it does is that it is actually look at the upper pawns and what it does is it actually sends a negative 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 signals okay inhibitory signals uh to the dorsal display group to uh to inhibit okay to inactivate this one so that way uh, that way the inspiratory centers is done and you can excel uh so this guy right here, Nemo, this what is the name of this guy? We call this as a nemotaxic center. What is it called? Nemotaxic center. Okay, it's called nemotaxic center. Nemo means like to get towards lungs, and tax means to stop. There's a nemotaxic center that actually stimulates this um, to inhibit this. And there's also one more nuclei. I'm going to write it down right here, and we'll talk about it. Uh, which is actually look at the lower pond. So I'm going to down it here, and this is called okay it's called apneostic center okay it's called apneostic center and it's located at the lower pond and what is the role of this one is that the role of that is that it is actually a powerful stimulator for this guy this which is um, my dorsal respiratory group or you can say uh the inspiratory center is a power remember why because if you want to if you stimulate the apneostic center what you're going to do is you're going to be able to take a prolonged breathing, okay? Because it's going to, it's going to have a stimulus the inspiration, so you're able to take a long, prolonged breathing. That's what it does. But the pneumotaxic, other, other way, what it does is it stops uh, the, the inspiration centers. So if you say, let's say, if you give, let's say if you powerly, powerfully stimulated pneumotaxic centers, okay, maybe because of... Uh, lots of carbon dioxide level is there, okay? And we'll talk about that process too. When you powerfully stimulate the pneumotaxic center, what's going to happen? Let's make this as a, if you're pneumotaxic, let's say pneumo, okay, and then what is it, pneumo center? If you powerfully stimulate this pneumotaxic, what's going to happen? It's going to powerfully, powerfully, what is it going to do? Powerfully inhabit this dorsal respiratory group of nuclei, right? If you're powerfully, what's going to happen to this ramp? Let's make this one. If it's powerfully, let's make this a, if you make, if you, let's just powerfully stimulate this as we make we, we do like this right and then there's a seconds and then pause right here right? there's a three second pause right so if you powerfully stimulated that what's going to happen this 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 time the durations this will be shorter there will be a shorter inspirations right but that means if this was the normal, then what's going to happen? The U.S. center will be down here, right? That means what's going to happen to the respiratory rate? It will go up, right? That will, that's what happen. So here, you could just say that if you're powerfully stimulated, you're going to have a respiratory rate that's going to increase, okay, that's proportional to that. And then what's going to decrease? You're going to have a shorter inspiration or insp uh, the inspiratory ramp. Okay, that's what's going to happen. And what about, uh, what about if you, let's say, uh, weakly stimulate uh, this pneumotaxic center? If that's the case, then what's going to happen? You're going to have, if this weakly stimulated, that means what's going to happen with this guy right here. It's going to get, it is going to go, it is going to have a longer, this ramp, like mean longer prolonged inspirations, right? With a shorter respiratory rate, that's what's going to happen. So with the, this way you're going to have a, lower respiratory rate and then with a prolonged inspiration that's what it's going to happen with the pneumotaxic center it makes sense right because pneumotaxic center is what it's trying to do it's going to it's trying to inhabit the dorsal respiratory group that's what they're trying to do now